Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and today I wanted to start doing the wrap-ups that I haven't done this year so far. I haven't really filmed any videos since the end of January or the beginning of February so I haven't done any wrap-ups. You guys don't know what I've been reading unless you are friends with me on Goodreads. If you are, you kind of know what I'm doing. If you don't, please add me on Goodreads so we can see what we're reading and talk about books. But since I haven't done any wrap-up so far this year, I think it's about time to start doing that. I haven't read much in the first half of this year and that is because in April I graduated from uni, therefore I had to write my thesis. I had to read a lot of non-fiction to write my thesis. From January to April I only read five books and in this video I wanted to briefly talk about those five books so we can start doing this shit. The first book I finished in 2020 was an audiobook that I had started at the end of last year and that is The Mystic School of Music Craft by Jessica Corey. This audiobook was narrated by Susie Jackson who did a wonderful job. This is the kind of audiobook that makes me say yes audiobooks have such a great potential. They can give to readers such a wonderful, mind-blowing reading experience. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So basically, this is a middle grade and the main protagonist is Amelia Jones. She has lost her parents and the only thing that she's left is the flute that her mother used to play. And we are in a fantasy world where when you play an instrument, you perform spells. There's this music craft academy where she wants to go because that's where you learn how to use your instruments to do magic and that's where her mom used to go when she was a teenager. She is not as skilled as she would like to, not as skilled as the other kids who are trying out for this academy. However, she gets in and stuff happens. It was slightly predictable. At times it was repetitive in, in a necessary way, I feel like, uh, especially when it came to her criticizing her own actions, doubting herself, the grief that she felt for her mom's death. It was very deep and beautiful, but at times it really became too repetitive and it wasn't necessary for the story itself. If I had to read this book solely based on the story, I would give it three stars. But since it was the audiobook that it was, for the listening experience, it was five stars. Therefore, I brought it down to four stars as a rating for the whole reading experience, I guess. And just to give you a tiny taste, of what the audiobook is like. The door flings open with a blast of rock music. Every hair on my body stands on end as the sound hits me like a bolt of lightning and I clap my hands over my ears. A jumble of noise erupts from the room. Screeching electric guitar. I just peeked at your student file when Mr. P left it on his desk during detention one day. Jai whoops and waves his violin over his head. Hey, everyone! What are we gonna kick? Ghost butt, we scream. Beethoven's fifth, first movement. We fall into two lines and strike up the powerful spell. Golden light explodes from our instruments and spreads overhead, then down to the ground, forming a glittering shell around us all. We parade through the front doors of Harmony Hall. So, as you can hear, <laughs> that was wonderful, and that's what happened throughout the whole audiobook and it was incredible, I loved it, I loved it. The second book I read was an Italian book, La Scatola di Cuoio by Gianni Spinelli. This book is set in the late 50s and the story takes place in a small made-up town in the region where I was born, Basilicata, in the south of Italy and it's basically a satire, I guess. It's a comedy about human vices, about greedy people, greedy families who want to inherit the possessions of this person, Don Pantaleo, who was 
full of vices himself, especially when he came to women. It was, again, slightly predictable, especially towards the ending, but it was so much fun to read. And also, it's very realistic when it comes to the way people spoke to each other, the description of food, of our local tradition. It was very, very realistic, and I read it when I was back in Milan to study, so it kind of reminded me of home for a little bit, which I really appreciated. So predictable, but also nice and a realistic portrayal of not only my region, I guess, but it was also a realistic depiction of how the church was, especially in some small towns. So in the end, I gave it three stars. The next book I read was, again, an audiobook, and it was A Kishot by Salman Rushdie. Guys, I'm not gonna talk to you about this book because I wouldn't know how. That book was a fucking mindfuck. I don't know how to describe it. It was as if the author was high <laughs> when he had the first idea. It follows different generations of Indian people that moved to America or that lived in India and stayed there. And then it has multiple POVs of a fictional character and the author of that fictional character. And it's a satire, it's such a realistic and faithful social commentary of the whole world and sometimes more specifically about India and the United States. It talks about immigration, about fame, about drugs, alcohol, trigger warnings for suicide, sexual abuse, trigger warnings for everything. There's everything in this book. It was so long. I, maybe it was like, I feel like the audiobook was like 20 hours long. Let me tell you, the audiobook was 16 hours long, but it felt like more. <laughs> it felt like more than 16 hours. So it was such a long book. I'm proud I finished it. It was a masterpiece. It really was. But at the same time, it was so long and it dragged on for so long. And so many times I was like, what the F are you talking about right now? Why is that here? Because it was too long. So it was objectively a masterpiece, like a grand work, you know? But at the same time, it was so <sighs> complicated. Sometimes you had to, you know, really climb your way out of some passages and chapters. Dude, just keep it short, okay? And I would never reread it, so that itself says something about the book, at least for me. So it was great and I'm happy I read it, but at the same time it was a 3 3.5 stars. Thank God for audiobooks, as always. Um, another audiobook I listened to was King of Crows by Liba Bray. I was so excited. This was the conclusion to the Diviner series by Liva Bray. It's a series that I loved, that I was such a huge fan of, and I still am, but this book was a disappointment. It was a three stars at most to me. It was so long, you guys, and for the most part, nothing happened. It didn't need to be that long after we've been with these characters for four long books. The conclusion was so quick, so messy. I'm not even sure how they did what they did because it wasn't really explained. Everything was like explained, but in a way that wasn't really explaining what was happening, what was the logic behind certain machines and powers and actions. It was really messy, it was not clear at all. Some choices were so effing predictable. I feel like this book was too heavy on being a social commentary. Like at some point, it was like screaming in your face hey, this is happening to black people, this is happening to farmers, this is happening to queer people. That's all good and great. It's good that you're showing to me what happened, how difficult it was in the 20th century. It's great and useful and it's a way for the reader to learn, but you don't have to scream it. This is a book that is definitely aimed at an older audience. So you can expect your older readers to kind of understand where you're going with your story, with what you're saying, with what you're showing. So you don't need to scream at my face, 
you know? You don't have to dot all the I's, you know what I'm saying? You can leave something for me to interpret, something for me to elaborate on my own. Give me the space to mature my thoughts without you telling me, hey, you have to go this way, this way and this way. You have to trust your reader a little bit to understand certain things without being too obvious about everything, especially for not that long throughout the whole freaking book. So, huge step down from all the other books in the series. I guess what I'm saying is I have fond memories of the first three books, the first and third one in particular, but the last book was definitely a conclusion that kind of let me down. And the last book I want to mention in this video is a graphic novel and that is Relish by Lucy Nicely. This is a graphic memoir by the the author and I absolutely adored it. I adore Lucy Nicely's art style, it is so cute and adorable and I feel like her graphic novel had the perfect balance of drawings and writings and reflection on what happened during her life and what happened and how what happened brought her where she is now, how that impacted her life as an adult. I just loved it and I'm going to read all the other graphic memoirs that she has done so far. There are so many that I have to catch up with and that makes me really really happy. In this graphic novel, Relish, My Life in the Kitchen, as you can understand from the title, it mainly focuses on food and there's the best mouth-watering food gasmy description of the taste and texture of a croissant and I adore croissants so much and it was when I read it it almost made me cry because it was so beautiful I don't have the graphic novel with me so I'll try to find that description of croissant it was the best thing I've ever read about croissants and it made me so so happy and that book was gifted to me and recommended to me by a friend of mine that introduced me to Lucy Nicely so that just makes me very very happy overall and I gave it five shiny stars. So this was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you soon with my next videos about the rest of the books that I read in the first half of 2020. Warm hugs! <laughs>